We're going to be looking at Adalo versus Flutterflow. You're going to be learning five things throughout this video. We're going to be looking at key features found on Adalo in Flutterflow. We're going to look at pricing, which one I would choose, how you're going to be able to make money with these platforms. And you know what? I'm going to be talking about a lot of things people are talking about on the message board that companies aren't answering. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to be talking about the elephant in the room with Adalo at the end. So let's begin. First of all, what in the world is Adalo? Adalo is a platform where you can create responsive apps and you don't need to code. Flutterflow, you can create applications that you can scale and build. Imagine this version one of an app and you can be doing this and publish it as a mobile app, native and everything, all of that good stuff. Uh, one of the biggest differences I would say is for Flutterflow, you're going to be able to take the code with you if you wanted to, right? So when you're creating the application visually, you can click a little export button depending on the, the tier that you have, the pricing tier, and you can bring that along with you and leave Flutterflow if you desire. That would be the summary of the two. But let's go a little bit deeper on the features, what Adalo has, okay? So Adalo allows you to have a lot of control when you're creating something visually. Let's go a little bit deeper and talk about that. If you want to build something that is also on desktop and on mobile, you can have different screen sizes. It will adjust really easily. So you can have responsive screen scaling. You can have control over the layout. You can also decide what you're going to be showing on a mobile screen and on a web version. For example, say for instance, you have a certain feature on your website that you think looks really good on a website, but doesn't look good on mobile. Well, you can decide to have certain visibility on in turning it on and off. So you can have some things that show up on web and other things that show up on mobile. That's what you have with Adalo. Now, let's look at the functionality of Adalo. What can you be doing? Well, you can actually hook it up with a lot of things that you already love. For example, you can hook it up with Xano. So if you're creating a lot of things in the back end, you need to do a lot of things with that. Um, that there's an integration right there so you can scale the back end. Now, if you're not familiar with database, it's just how the app is smart, how it saves, saves data or pieces of information. So having something like Xano, that's really important. And with Adalo 2.0, that's a huge emphasis that they're, they're pointing out. Let's go a little bit deeper. Uh, if you're using something like Zapier, that allows you to uh, have a lot of automation or it cuts out manual tasks. You can also have Zapier with Adalo as well. So say for instance, you need your app to be connected to uh, Google Sheets or maybe Gmail or something like that. You can be doing all of that with Adalo and have that integration. And there's tons of other things that you can be doing with it by the marketplace. That allows you to do other things like take payments and do all of these things with Adalo. Now we'll come back and look at some of the things that it's comparing itself to, like Adalo, Glide, Bubble, and Softer. Let me know if you want me to do a head-to-head -head comparison. We've done it in the past, but if you want to see the new updates, we can do it. But we're going to come back to that in a moment. All right, so let's take a look at Flutterflow and some of the features that it has. Okay, so it says turn your ideas into products, build your app as an iOS, Android, or web, all within one platform. Sounds kind of similar, right? But let's take a look at some of the features that they have. You can have animations. So you can do a lot of custom animations that you want. And also allows you to have different animation from like Lottie, 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 <laughs> or others to be able to do that. That's really important. Push notifications. You can send this to your customers. Say, for instance, if you want them to know certain information, push them to a sale, different notifications for a marketplace. You can do all of that. You can create light or dark mode for it. I love that, dark mode all the time. And also you can have chat and group chat features in your application. Now, as we go even deeper into Flutterflow and with Adalo, it's really important that you write down what your app needs or your project needs right now. When you're looking at all these components, it might be overwhelming and you might not know, you know which one do I need or could it do? Write down exactly what you need and if you're creating a project or an MVP, a minimal viable product for the first time, think about just one major feature. You can add other things later. A lot of people are like, I want everything that Instagram has or TikTok. 
strip it down, think about one thing that you need to launch your product or project that you want to build. That's going to help you focus on which features you need and which platform you should be going to. All right, now let's talk about the pricing of these different platforms. That's a huge conversation, especially with no code and um, just these platforms. How much is it gonna cost? Well, to begin, you can start for free with a dollar. You're gonna be able to have a database and collections, but note right here, let me zoom in real quick. You can have 200 records per app, a thousand monthly app actions. This is something to really pay attention to depending on how many users that you have. This can still work for you if you're just getting started to test it out. But depending on how many actions you're having the user take, you might rack up a thousand app actions pretty quickly. Um, you can have unlimited screens and unlimited test apps. That's pretty awesome because you can change your mind a thousand times. They're not gonna charge you if you just have all of these different test apps. It will allow you to, again, start for free, and to go from here. But if you notice right here, it says one app editor, that means a person that's using it, 200 records per app. And then it says on the starter plan, that's $45, one published app. That's interesting. One published app starts at $45 a month. So this begs the question, okay, for the app version or the web version, it's not published, does that still count? Well, yeah. So if we go down for a detailed more view, publish to web, you can do that for free. If you're going to publish it to the app store, it's going to be $45. So I still think this is fine, especially if you're just getting uh, you know, validation or beta users. Send this bad boy out, get validation, see how people like it, get them to pay for the app, and then you can shift over to starter. There's a whole other video we talk about if you're going to use ads and all of those things to make money. But if you don't have a lot of users, ads are not going to save you. You're not going to make enough money, even close to enough money for this to be viable. You need to have paying customers. You have to have a very a paying or a uh, value proposition that people are willing to pay. So you can start for free, uh, $45 per month. You get 10,000 monthly app actions. Again, there's a caveat. It really depends on how many things your users are doing. So it, just keep that in mind, 10,000 app actions for one type of app is gonna look very different from another. An inventory app where you're just having a business take inventory is gonna be very different than you trying to create a social media platform. Keep that in mind. The other things that you can be doing with it, again, one published app, custom fonts, custom domains, published to web. Okay, that's all good stuff. The only difference that I see is when you go up to the professional plan, you can publish two apps. That's $65. Um, that's where you can start having de design versions. I would love to know more information if that has to do with um, the custom you know, designs, if you're gonna be changing it based on if it's web or everything like that. Um, and then also geolocation. Okay, that could help if you're going to have um, a ride sharing app, but it even depends on the functionality of that ride sharing app, right? Just because it has geolocation, doesn't necessarily mean that it will update update in real time. It might just have an address, it might do calculations. I'd reach out to Adalo for geolocation and exactly what the functionality would be. Um, or is it just gonna integrate so that you, you know, can see, oh, you know, it drops a pin and all that kind of stuff on a location. Now, where it says publish to web, it says publish to app stores. That's pretty interesting to me because it says one published app. I wonder what they're like the distinguishing part right there. Published to the App Store, it's $65. Let's take a look at this, drop it down. Okay, so if you notice right here, you can have a public custom domain at $45. You can't publish to the app, uh, Apple App Store or Google Play until $65. That's interesting. So I would want them to define a little bit more what a published app is versus free. I wonder if a published app is, um, that's interesting. So free would probably just be the beta, right? For you to send it to them. But I wonder how they distinguish published app and just when it's a test app. Um, yeah, that sign up. That's a little bit confusing right there to me anyway. So professional, you're looking in all in at $65 a month 
to publish to the App Store. And $200 a month if you're going to do a Xano integration. That's interesting because, and we'll give you a preview at the end of the video because we're going to talk about the elephant in the room about the database and what that means in the background. So stay tuned. Think about that. At the end of the video, I'm going to say why that is pretty interesting, why it's going to be $200 a month with a Xano integration. All right, so let's take a look at Flutterflow. Flutterflow, what are the pricing? 0, 30, 70, and then 70 if you're doing per user. So let's take a look. So free, you can have two. Uh, okay, let's go to the basics. You can do the plat core platform features, pre-built templates, Firebase integration. That's great. So Firebase is a um, Firebase allows you to create databases, and they're very expansive. And so that's really great that it allows you to do that at the free level. Two API endpoints just means two um, systems talking to each other. So if you're doing stuff with APIs, thirty dollars is where you put the code. Always a fan of it. Download the um, APK. Uh, two endpoints, Firebase integrations. Okay. At the seventy dollars, that's where it really just unlocks everything, right? You can do one-click app uh, translations with Google Translate. Nice app and app and play store deployment, GitHub integration. So if you're working with uh, a, a team that codes and does stuff with GitHub, you can go back and forth. Unlimited API endpoints, Firebase integrations, pre-built templates. Okay, core. So if I'm looking at this, it's at seventy dollars all in. I see no real difference if I'm going to be going with Teams, but again, it's shared design library. Okay, so if I'm, that would be if I'm really building out an agency, I'm looking to have a lot on my team, I would need the uh, Teams version. $70 for all of it to be deployed. And again, even starting at the beginning, I can have a really powerful database all at $0 to really get started all the way through. Uh, to deploy, that's going to be 70. So let's compare the two. Deploying, so published to App Store, 65. Flutterflow is 70. Worst case scenario, if I wanted to publish it once, take all the code and roll, I could do that at $70. But there's going to be reasons why I think just managing everything on Flutterflow is going to be a lot easier. But we go at that. Okay. Now, we went through the key features, the pricings. Uh, let's let's uh, let's talk about which one I would choose before we get into uh, the nitty gritty of how you're going to make money and the elephant in the room. So if we're looking at a Dalo or Flutterflow, which one I would choose, I'm just going to say it's going to be Flutterflow. Now, it depends on what you're looking to do in your skill level to determine which one you should use first. For example, a Dalo is a lot easier to get started. You can have a lot of things that it builds out. It builds out the logic. There's a lot of things that look very easy then you can run with it. In fact, we have a, a Dalo for Beginners video down below. But it is also more constrictive and you can't do as much as you can do with Flutterflow. So it depends on your, your use case, what's the functionality you need, uh, your learning curve, all of those things. But I'm gonna go with Flutterflow for all the reasons I'm about to go into. Number one, their features uh, that Flutterflow's team launches a lot more so they're constantly coming out with different features if you want to see all the things that they do check out the flutterflow blog and they're launching things weekly weekly they're putting out new stuff so check out the flutterflow blog the other thing which we go into really the pricing is to have a robust database i can start this from the beginning um this has been a thing for years and I've talked about it in, uh, you know, for years I've talked about this. The database is slow on a dollar. So when you're trying to create a lot of advanced features or functionality with the database, the native database of a dollar, it just doesn't cut it. So the next layer up that you would have to go is I would suggest Xano. Some people use backend list, whatever you want to use, but I'm looking at a Xano integration at $200 a month. I'm just, I'm just not feeling that. I'm just not feeling that. Um, the other thing is with Flutterflow, they now have the AI uh, gen where you're going to be able to uh, write out with a prompt similar to like ChatGPT or anything like that, what kind of 
uh, page you want, and Flutter will Flutterflow will create it. Right now, it's uh, up to three pages it will create a day. I assume that will increase once it gets out of alpha, but still, that's a huge, huge advancement. Just another way where AI is supercharging um, uh, no-code platforms and low-code platforms. That's one of the things I, I like with Flutterflow. That's that's just a few things. Not only that, the idea that I have control of the code, I can be working with other coders that are having skills that I am not proficient at. They can go into GitHub, change it, and bring it back to me. There's just so many more advantages when you're using Flutterflow. I will say there's a caveat. The learning curve is a lot steeper with Flutterflow. You're going to have to learn the fundamentals and the basics to be able to do that. But the upside to me is just so much more. Again, and if people are like, oh, you're railing on a dollar. Listen, y'all, I even did courses for a dollar. You'll see in the community section, you'll see my face in there because I'm I'm there. But you know I'm real about what I what I suggest. All right. So I'm just telling you pros and cons. You're still gonna have to decide which one you want. And by the way, I will say this for a dollar, I'm not saying it's a no-go for anything. We have seen people raise millions using a dollar apps to show proof of concept and then they rebuild it in another platform, either with Flutterflow or custom coding or whatever. But to get the investors for getting the buy-in for people to understand, they use the Dalo. So Adalo has its place. And it, you can watch the videos down below. I actually think they have the best resources explaining what a one-to-many database is, a one-to-one -one database, the way they structure it for you to do a plug-and-play of database. I actually think it's uh, top-notch, the best in the community. But the database itself, there has been some problems, y'all. So I'm just letting you know. Now, before we go on, we're just going to be talking about if you're like, but how do I make money with all this stuff? Got you for that, too. That's why we have the 50 plus high profit side hustles that breaks down no matter what platform you use, Glide, Adalo, Flutterflow, all these things. How you can start making money and think about how you can start um, having different multiple streams of income based off of learning these skills, releasing templates, being a service provider, being an expert, releasing courses, all of these different things and examples and showing how much people are making. That's all in the free guide for the 50 plus high profit side hustles. All right. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room. I alluded to it in the pricing and just now, but the elephant in the room that a lot of people don't want to talk about is although how pretty Adalo looks and I like the 2.0, I have not seen any any documentation that talks about how bad their native database or backend is. I haven't seen any updates. I've looked on message boards. I've talked to people on Twitter. I've put out messages. Hey, could anyone explain how this is being improved? And from what I can see is it's pretty much silence. So what does, what does that mean to me? That means that they are offloading and they're not really going to advance right now in their backend and they rather partner with ones that are focused on backend, that's going to be Xano. There's no problem with that. I like that. Xano, we're friends with them. We've we've done videos about them. I think it's probably one of the best platforms for backend um, anything. And you can do more than just create a database. You can do tons of things with Xano. The issue that I have with that is number one, it comes into the pricing now of Adalo of making it so expensive. Uh, just all in, if we're looking at $200, um, that's that's pretty high for a for a no code platform. Um, now, again, if you have no um, if you need to go to market very quickly and you just need speed, it still might be a viable thing. But if I'm paying $200, I just go to Flutterflow. There's got to be something, a, a functionality on a dollar that I need that I need to stay on a dollar for $200. And I haven't seen it yet. The other thing is I don't like that they haven't addressed it. I think it's all in the room. I've I've had many discussions and I've tried to get an answer. It's coming soon, yada, 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 da, da, da. Just be honest. If it's like, hey, listen, we're just going to do front end. We're, we're going to focus on that. Get, get your own back end. That's fine. No big deal. But here's another thing that you're going to have to layer on, right? I just told you the price of a dollar, y'all. That's not including how much you're going to have to pay for Xano, right? Because you're paying for the front end, I didn't tell you how much it's going to be to integrate 
for the back end. So let's just bring over the pricing for Xeno because that's something that you're going to have to think about the all in price. Now you can start for free with Xeno, but then you're going to have to put on $59 and that's going to be yearly. What is that going to be monthly? I have to check that. And then look, when you're scaling up, you see how much it's going to be. All right. So when you're thinking about the price of using a Dalo and a Xano backend, minimum two hundred dollars, and then you're going to have to think about how much the backend is going to be for Xano. Something to think about. So I don't see anyone else talking about it online. I've talked about it here. If you have more questions, let me know in the comment section down below. But that's just the reality. I don't think it's a deal breaker necessarily. And again, I've seen a lot of people make a lot of money using a Dalo for their MVP. But if I'm looking to scale my V1 and beyond, I'm going to go with Flutterflow. I'm going to go with Flutterflow. Now, if you still have questions and thinking about, well, what does this mean? How can I get involved in no code? All those things. That's why we have the no code industry trends report where you can look at all the future things. How are people making money? Who, what kind of businesses are making money with no code? Are they agencies? Are they SaaS? Are they freelancers? We go through all of that in the um, in the industry report right there. Get that in the link down below. And if you need an expert, that's why we've got Docs Connections. Get help for your no code and tech problems. All right. You let us know. These are to get connected with paying experts. When you get linked up, you're going to get an opportunity to talk to them, but it costs money. I've worked with tons of great experts, builders, developers, all those things. I just want you to have a great connection with them. But guess what? These are professionals. They charge. And everyone charges a little bit different. But if you're serious and you need help, let us know. Let us know your um, your budget, all of those things. And we'll work with those constraints and all of those things. Let me know in the comment section down below. Which one are you going to use? Adalo, Flutterflow? Do you have more questions? Let me know. And I'll see you in the next video.